Hi, my name is Judy Blondell. Welcome to our presentation of Preparing Your 2013 Form 1099 Miscellaneous. We will refer to this simply as Form 1099 or just 1099. Today, you will learn how to prepare, print, and transmit 1099 forms to your vendors and to the IRS. We will review the information you will need to have on hand prior to issuing the 1099s. A vendor would need a 1099 if they operate a business as an individual, partnership, trust, or estate. But if they operate as a corporation, a 1099 generally is not required. You should obtain a Form W-9 from your vendors prior to issuing payments and certainly by the end of the year to ensure that you have all the required information. If your business doesn't use 1099 vendors, such as self-employed businesses, or if you have your accountant take care of 1099 vendors, you don't need to turn on the preference. The 1099 vendors are treated just like any other vendor you use. You enter and pay bills and QuickBooks will track these payments. You will need to generate 1099 reports at the end of the year if your 1099 vendor has reached the filing threshold of $600 for the Form 1099. If you want to activate or inactivate this preference, go to the menu bar under Edit, Preferences, and then scroll down to Tax 1099. Click on the Company Preferences tab, and then answer the question, do you file 1099 miscellaneous forms to turn this function either on or off? At the end of your fiscal year, the 1099 vendor's option may be turned on and off depending on your business. If you are activating the 1099 vendors, you will also need to map the accounts associated to the 1099 fields. Just follow the instructions on the company tab. Mapping the accounts will let QuickBooks know which accounts to assign to your 1099 vendors so they will be counted as non-employee compensation. To map your accounts, click as indicated. If you just want to do the mapping, click here. If you want to prepare and map, click the second one. We're just going to do the mapping. You have the choice of seeing the list of payment transactions for 1099 vendors from the previous year. You can view all of your chart of accounts. So that you can select individual accounts. Or you can check on the checkbox to have all accounts appear in box 7 for the 1099 form, which is non-employee compensation. When you have finished selecting accounts, be sure to click Save and Close. When you inactivate this preference, the vendor eligible for 1099 option will not be on the Tax Settings tab and will not appear in the vendor options to print or e-file 1099 reports at the end of the year. For each 1099 vendor, you will need to have a Form W-9 completed by the vendor and kept on file. 
The W-9 forms have the information that you will need to get the 1099 forms to your vendors by the January 31st deadline. This includes the vendor's legal name, tax ID, and mailing address. These forms are available from your accountant or from irs.gov under the heading Forms and Pubs. To mark a vendor as a 1099 recipient while in the Edit Vendor window, open the Tax Settings tab. We'll use Maureen Lynn Fay, edit, click on the tax settings tab, and here is the check mark that needs to be there along with her tax ID. Their tax ID could either be an employer identification number or their social security number. A vendor may be identified as needing a 1099 without having a tax ID recorded. You will get a message saying that no tax ID has been entered. Do you want to enter it now? Click on No. and you can go back and enter the information when you have received it. The 1099 wizard will help you prepare for printing your 1099s. The first thing it will have you do is to run a checkup to be sure everything is in order before distributing the forms to the vendors and the government. To access the wizard, under the Vendors tab, choose Print eFile 1099s 1099 wizard. Click on Get Started. In this wizard, you will be able to verify that all the addresses are up to date and expense accounts are reported correctly. Next, you can select your 1099 vendors by adding or removing the checks beside their names and click Continue when ready for the next step. If an address is missing or a tax ID is either missing or in an invalid format, the fields will be highlighted in red. You may enter or edit the information directly into the appropriate field and click continue when you have finished. The mapping window is next, at which time you have the opportunity to review all of the accounts that have been associated with the 1099 vendors and to make changes if you need to. Click Continue to move on to the Exclusions section. The IRS has many forms of transactions that are not allowed as a vendor payment because these payments are reported to them by other networks. These transactions are payments you have made by debit card, credit card, gift card, or third-party payments such as PayPal.
When you click continue, you have a list of 1099 vendors that you will need to confirm the tax ID, total payment included on 1099s, the total payment not mapped to 1099s, and the total per vendor. You can drill down into these transactions of a particular vendor by double clicking anywhere on the row containing the vendor's information. This will open a 1099 detail report, allowing you to view all of the transactions that make up the payment balance for the vendor for the year. You can also double click on any specific transaction if you have any further questions about it. Again, click continue when satisfied with the numbers that will be reported. QuickBooks gives you two options by which you may file your 1099 forms. You may e-file your federal and state forms and print a copy for your vendors, or you may print all of the copies. To e-file using the Intuit 1099 service, or to simply learn more about the service and how much the service would cost, click on the Go to Intuit 1099 service button. Click on the 10, 9, Print 1099s button if you decide to do them yourself. There is a 1099 print wizard that will walk you through the steps to make sure the forms are printed correctly. The first thing it will ask you to do is to verify the year you are printing. Since you will probably be sending out the forms in January, you will select last calendar year as the date from the drop-down list, which is the default setting. When you click OK, you'll see a list of all vendors who should be receiving a 1099. You can click the preview 1099 to see what the forms will look like after you have printed them. At this point, check your forms thoroughly for any problems with your company name, address, or employer ID number. Also, verify that you have the latest address and tax ID for your vendors. Click Close on the preview window to return to the window with the list of vendors to be printed. The forms should now be loaded into your printer. If you are using a laser printer, set the number of copies to three. Dot matrix printers will use a three-part form. These forms may all be ordered from Intuit in batches of 25 and are available for both laser and dot matrix printers. They are also available from Staples and Office Depot. After the forms have been printed, click on the Print 1096 button 
in the print 1099s to print window. You will need to enter the name of a contact person from your company, which will be printed on the forms, who will be able to answer any questions about the forms. Print two copies of the transmittal form 1096, one copy for your files, and the other is sent to the IRS along with the 1099s. Again, the 1099s along with the 1096s must be mailed no later than January 31st. Most small companies will only have Box 7, non-employee compensation, to deal with. Other income you may need to report would be Box 3 for other income, Box 6 for medical and health care payments, Box 14 for gross proceeds paid to an attorney, among others. If you do have other boxes that need to be populated, you will need to repeat the steps again for each box. Thank you for watching our presentation about Vendor Form 1099.